دكتور اشرف محرم بس في السكه مزنوق في السكه فالوقت دكتور مصطفى محمود هيتكلم على البايوميكانكس اوف ذا ريست جوينت وهو من اصعب الجوينتس المحتاجه ان نفهمها ونفهم البايوميكانكس بتاعتها في مقولة شهيرة جدا ان 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 The capitate is adjacent to the hamate. The capitate and the hamate is uh, connected to a very strong ligament, allowing only gliding motion. The trapezium and the trapezoid completes the distal carpal row. And they are, they are not in the same plane. They are in palmar plane constituting the fixed carpal arch. When we add the metacarpal, the second and third metacarpal, this functional unit of the hand is, is a, the central functional unit of the hand with the, which is very uh, strongly connected to each other. And when we add the first metacarpal, which is the thumb metacarpal, the metacarpal of the fourth and fifth, This constitutes the adaptive corporal arch, and when you see, this is the adaptive corporal arch formed by the fourth and fifth rays and first ray, and you will see here that the index is very unique, and it constitutes a separate unit of, uh, in the function of the hand. This is the proximal corporal row, the radius and ulna, and The head of the capitate is usually attached, is usually articulating 50% to the scaphoid and 50% to the lunate. And also the lunate articulates with the capitate in two thirds of people. However, in one third of, uh, of, um, of normal population, it articulates uh, with two facets, one with the capitate and one with the hamate. The Lister tubercle is opposite the proximal polar scaphoid, it's not opposite the scaphoid ligament. The lunate is covered 50% by the radius and 50% by the TFCC. And this is in the, the normal uh, deviation, but in ulnar deviation, the lunate is fully covered with the distal radius. And the white line express the, the long axis of the third metacarpal. The midcarpal ligaments, which is the STT, scaphocapitate, and triquetroham uh, and um, ligaments are, um, they are not as strong ligaments as the, the other uh, ligaments in the distal carpal row because they allow some motion in the midcarpal joint. And as we will see that the midcarpal joint is much more important than the radiocarpal articulation. So the midcarpal restraints are more lax uh, than the distal carpal restraints, and the lunocapitate joint is left without any restraint. When you see the, the ligaments between the scaphoid, the lunate, lunate, triquitrum, They, are, they connect the proximal carpal row bones to each other, allowing great arc of motion, and uh, the scaffold unit ligament is stronger dorsal, and the lunotraquitral ligament is stronger in the volar. And this constitutes the ring concept of stability with the loss of any link in this ring will lead to carpal uh, uh, dysfunction. Lamambosa, extrinsic radiocarpal ligaments and, and truth, 
ان اول ليجمنت هو راديوس كفويد ليجمنت راديوس كافو كابيتيت ليجمنت which is the long axis اللي بيحصل عليه روتيشن اوف ذا سكافويد فلكشن اكستنشن اتس فيري سترونج ليجمنت ريرلي اتس تورن ذا لونج راديو لينيت ليجمنت اند هيرز ان اناتوميكال ريبريزنتيشن اوف ذا راديو سكافويد راديو سكافو كابيتيت اند لونج راديو لينيت اند اون ذا انر سايد ذا تراكويترو هاميت اند ذا تراكويترو كابيتيت ليجمنت ذي ار فيري سترونج ليجمنتس The short radial unit, this, uh, this ligament is very important because it's the only ligament that remains intact con uh, connected to the unit in, um, in the fourth grade of the transcaphoid peronid uh, on, on a peronid unit uh, instability pattern. The ulno lunate, ulno triquitial ligaments. The most important thing is the arcuate ligament and when you see The arcuate ligament is the continuation of the radius scaphoid capitate ligament and the triquitru capitate triquitru hamate ligament. This is the radial limb and this is the ulnar limb. And when you see here, you will find in the volar aspect of the wrist there is a, an empty space which is a space of Poirier. This this space is not covered, um, uh, is near, uh, shows no no ligamentous connection. And when you see here. This asterisk, the red asterisk, it's um, uh, the starting point of the failure of the mid-carpal articulation and perineate uh, dislocation, as we will discuss later. In ulnar deviation, the STT ligaments pull on the scaphoid, allowing um, tension of the STT articulation, and there is compression between the hamate and the triquitrum. So the scaphoid extends and the triquitrum under pressure of the hamate, it, trans it is uh, um, translated palmarly and extends also. And in other deviation, you will see here in this um, uh, example that the lunate is fully covered. And when you see the X-rays, you'll find the lunate adopted a triangular configuration in the AP view. On ulnar deviation, uh, on radial deviation, the reverse occurs. There is pressure over the distal scaphoid by the STT articulation, leading to um, the formation of the scaphoid ring sign. And this is the shape of the scaphoid in radial deviation. When you see this uh, diagram, When you see this video, you will see that on radial deviation, look on the scaphoid on this time. On radial deviation, the scaphoid flex, but it trans translates palmarly. And on ulnar, on ulnar deviation, look at the triquitrum on the red bone. On ulnar deviation, the triquitrum extends. It, it is tra translated palmarly also but it extends. So on radial ulnar deviation, the, the, the scaphoid and the triquitrum translates palmarly, but the scaphoid flex and the triquitrum extends. And this is a very important example, as we will see in the application later on. Uh, we all know that the uh, the capitate, lunate, and distal radius are collinear, allowing only 10 degrees of uh, angulation. The scaphoid adopts uh, 40 to 60 degrees in the lateral view um, relative, to, uh, relative to the long axis of the of the radius, and the as we know previously, the fixed carpal arch, the trapezium, and the trapezoid are on more palmar location than the capitate. So uh, upon flexion of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the wrist, the mid-carpal joint flex first, and then as we all know that the distal carpal row moves as one unit, it pushes on the scaphoid, and then the scaphoid flexes leading to flexion of the radiocarpal articulation and the lunate always follow 
the discified inflection. Most of motion occurs in the 60% of the motion occurs in the mid-carpal joint and 40% only occurs in the radiocarpal joint. And upon extension of the, um, uh, the reverse occur, decapitate extends first, tight STT, pull on the scaphoid, and then the lunate follows. However, this is not the usual that happens in, um, in our daily living. Our, in our daily living, most of the motions occur in the dart thrower. And uh, in dart thrower motion, motion occurs in extension, radial deviation, then flexion, on the deviation, as you see in the pictures. If you see here, this is the, the center of the lunate in neutral, in neutral position, and in radial deviation, the lunate flux. If you apply some extension to the radiocarpal articulation, the lunate becomes central. And also, in neutral position, with under deviation, the lunate extends, and if you apply some flexion over the radiocarpal articulation, the lunate will become pro, um, neutral again. So, in dart thrower motion from extension radial deviation to flexion under deviation, the lunate does not change much. In dart throwing motion, there is minimal motion on the radiocarpal articulation, and this is why I told you before that the mid-carpal motion is much more important than the radiocarpal motion. In the load transfer, 60% of the loads are transferred through the radioscaphoid articulation. 40% occurs through the ulnocarpal articulation, and all the loads are transferred through the distal carpal row. In the first application to uh, the basics that we have just described is that the perineal dislocation, which occurs in uh, four steps. The first step of perineal dislocation is leonate, is the capitate extension. In the capitate extension, opening of, the, of this space and failure of the scaffold unit ligament from palmar to dorsal, and here is the dorsal scaffold unit ligament. This is the first stage of perineal dislocation. And then this is followed by trans translocation of the capitate dorsally, and this does not occur except after tearing of the ulnar part of the arcuate ligament. And in the third step, the unitraquitral ligament fails, and as you see here, this is the triquitrum, this is the lunate. The lunitraquitrum, mo most important part of the lunitraquitrum is the volar part. It fails here. And as, as I, I have told you that um, um, the short radial lunate is very uh, tough structure and keep, keeps the lunate in its place. And in the fourth stage, there is dislocation of the lunate from its fossa levering only on the short radial lunate articulation. The second application is that when you see the radiocarpal articulation, it's a ball and socket. It's a nearly ball and socket joint. And when you see the mid-carpal articulation, it's not ball and socket, and it's an S-shaped configuration. So in arthritic conditions that necessitates f fusion of the radiocarpal articulation, please just fuse the radiocarpal articulation and excise the distal scaphoid to transfer this joint into a ball and socket joint, not keeping the S-shaped configuration of this. And you, this cartoon will show you, if we excise the scaphoid, it gives you transformation of the, of the mid-carpal joint into a ball and socket joint, allowing almost 60% of the normal motion in cases of radiocarpal articulation. And if you leave the scaphoid here, you will cause arthritis in this area and you will need a second session removing the distal scaphoid from this uh, uh, area. The third example is that scaphoid non-union, when the scaphoid fails, uh, it fails due to pressure of the capitate, pressure of the STT over the, um, uh, over the distal scaphoid, and if it opens dorsally, there, there will be hibernation of the, of the volar cortex, if it, if it opens um, uh, if it didn't open dorsally, there is excessive friction on the volar cortex, and there is res resorption of the volar cortex, and the lunate will be trans transferred into DZ. And to correct this situation, you have to open the scaphoid, apply bone graft, trapezoidal shaped strut graft, and then fix it. And if there is scaphoid arthrosis, usually starts in the 
in the radial styloid area, then it, uh, it extends to the, to the rest of the scaphoid fossa, then in the capitate fossa, and here's an example of an ulcer of the head of the capitate. So the solution in this is a four corner fusion, but if you do a four corner fusion without excision of the scaphoid, you will limit flexion and extension, so um, you, you have to excise the scaphoid in this condition of four corner fusion. We, um, we describe a modification of a four corner fusion, which is a bicolumnar fusion excising the scaphoid ex and fusing the lunate to the capitate triquetral hamate articulation, preserving capitu hamate and lunotriquetral articulation for some shock absorption. And radial styloidectomy follows. In the fifth application is the Cambox disease, stage three Cambox disease with the collapse. We will need to, um, to unload the, um, the lunate by STT fusion or scaphocapitate fusion. But if there is, if the radius uh, height is more, we may apply radial shortening. However, we should take care of the obliquity of the DRUJ articulation. In cases of reversed obliquity, radial shortening may cause problems and capitate shortening may be the solution in this condition. The lunate is, needs to be pushed palmarly by the scaphoid and dorsally by the triquetral hamate articulation with, with which have this orientation and the scaphoid trapezial articulation which have this orientation. The lunate is balanced between these two articulations. If uh, the radial link is, uh, is lost by scaphoid non-union or um, uh, uh, scaphoid lunate ligament rupture, the d uh, DZ will occur and if the ulnar link was lost, it will lead to VZ articulation of the lunate. So I want you to remember the dart thrower motion. And uh, if you have any arthritic condition, just fuse the radiocarpal articulation and excise the distal scaphoid. And remember the balance that's offered to the lunate by the STT joint and tracheoetral articulation. Thank you.